Welcome back. This is episode 175. In this week's episode, I'm going to cover some year-end tax moves to make to help lower your taxes potentially in 2023. And we're getting closer to the end of the year, so it's more important than ever that you implement some of these recommendations. The first five I'm going to cover have to be completed before the calendar year ends in 2023. And the last two, you still have some time to complete even after 2023 ends. You have until the tax filing deadline in April of 2024. And um, I really appreciate your listenership. And however, I'd like to ask a small favor. If you're new to the show, I'm trying to grow the reach of it. And if you haven't already done so, if you could please subscribe to this YouTube channel, or if you're listening, if you could please go to YouTube and search Retire with Ryan podcast and then subscribe, that would help me to increase the listenership as well as help you to stay up to date at, uh, with the latest videos as well as podcasts as I post them. So I appreciate your help in that. So the first tip that you can consider implementing would be to contribute to a state-sponsored 529 plan. And there are over 30 states that offer a tax deduction for contributing to a 529 plan. My home state of Connecticut offers a tax deduction of up to $5,000 per person uh, per year on your Connecticut state income tax. So a couple could deduct up to $10,000 on their Connecticut state income tax. Um, Other states such as New York, they offer $5,000 Uh, state tax deduction. Rhode Island offers only $500 per person, and New Jersey offers up to $10,000 per person. Uh, But with many of these state plans, you must contribute to that state's plan in order to benefit from this state tax reduction. So for example, where I live in Connecticut, you must contribute to one of Connecticut's two 529 plans. They're called the CHET plan, the Connecticut Higher Education Trust. And there's two options, an advisor sold plan and then a direct plan. My personal favorite is the direct plan. It has lower fees and um, you can set that up very easily. If you go to aboutchet.com, you can open that plan in probably a matter of minutes. And many people aren't aware of this, first of all. So if you have a child who's in college or a grandchild that you're trying to help save for college, you could set up an account in their name and you could contribute to the plan. Even if you're planning to just use that money shortly thereafter, you still could do that and take advantage of the tax deduction. There is no requirement for you to keep the money in for a certain period of time. And if you are going to take the money out quickly, make sure you use one of the conservative investment options like the money market option so that your money um, isn't at risk in the market if you're going to be taking it out sooner. And I've seen other people too that they're contributing to other states' plans because you don't have to contribute to your own state's plan. You can contribute to another one, and they're missing out on this deduction. So make sure that you're taking advantage of that. Now, there are some other states that allow um, deductions even if you don't contribute to their plan. For example, uh, Arizona, Alaska, Kansas, Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, and Pennsylvania. You can contribute to any state plan. And why might you want to do that? Well, your state's plan might not be that good. They might have might not have good investment options or the fees might be higher than some other options that are out there. So consider consider checking that out. Tax reduction tip number two is consider taking a tax loss. If you listen to last week's episode 174, I talked about how to turn investment losses, losses into winners through tax loss harvesting. So in case you missed it, if you have a non-retirement account or otherwise known as a taxable investment account, then you want to look at the cost basis or as it's known, the purchase cost for your investments in those accounts. And if those investments are now currently worth less money than what you bought them for, consider selling them and you can create up to a $3,000 tax loss for 2023. So again, this is your non-retirement or taxable accounts. And for more on this, go back and listen to episode 174, last week's episode. Tax tip number three, consider doing a Roth conversion. Many retirees have pre-tax retirement accounts, meaning you never paid tax on these accounts. You and your employer took a tax deduction on contributions going into these plans. And that means if you took a tax deduction on the money going in, when the money comes out, it will be taxable income in the year that you take it out. Also, starting at age 73 or age 75 for people who reach 75 in 2033 or later, 
the IRS forces you to take out what's known as required minimum distribution, um, otherwise known as a certain percentage of your account. Uh, sometimes it's called RMD. So starting in that year, you have to take out a certain percentage. And at 73, that equates to about 3.77%. has to come out by the end of that tax year, and it goes up from there. So to get ahead of that, you could possibly take the money out sooner, and this could possibly help you pay tax at a lower rate. This is known as a Roth conversion. And this is where you take money out of a pre-tax retirement account, you pay the tax at your current tax rate, and then move it over to a Roth IRA or Roth 401k. And you'd want to do this if you believe tax rates for you will be higher in the future, or if you think tax rates could be higher for your beneficiaries. And a great time for someone to consider a Roth conversion is when you have lower income in any tax year. For example, if you find yourself in between jobs, that year could be a great year, especially if that happened this year. If you didn't have a lot of income this year versus last year or versus what you think you'll have next year, this could be a great time to do a conversion. Or in the early years of retirement, like in your early 60s before you're collecting Social Security if you're retired, or before you reach age 73 where you're forced to take money out because you can't actually convert money that's supposed to come out for your required minimum distribution. You'd have to take that money out first and then convert any money after that. So a good time to do this is when you can convert money at the 12% tax bracket. So you may not know that everyone starts out paying tax at a 10% tax rate on a certain percentage of their income, then it jumps up to 12%, and then it jumps up to 22 And for a single filer in this year, your taxable income could be up to about $45,000 before you jump into the 22% bracket. And then for a married couple filing jointly, it's up to about $90,000 before your that income above 90000 jumps from being taxed at 12% to 22%. And you're not to bore everybody, but your taxable income is after you take the standard deduction of either 13850 as a single filer or if you double that as a joint filer. And then if you're over 65, you also qualify for another deduction of $1,850. So the point of me telling this is that you can convert a significant amount of money as a single or joint filer about up to um, $60,000 or um, double that, $120,000 as a married couple filing jointly and still pay tax at a 12% rate. So definitely consider doing that, especially if you have a sizable IRA that you're not planning to tap into all of it in the near future. A Roth conversion could be a great way to help you save some taxes in the future. Tip number four is set up a 401k or profit sharing plan for anyone who's self-employed or is running a small business. And the 401k limit for 2023 is $22,500. And if you're over 50, you can make an additional catch-up contribution of $7,500. So for any self-employed person, you still have time up until the end of the year to set up a self-employed 401k. And that gives you the ability to put in um, you know, depending on your age, up to $30,000, all of pre-tax money. If you need a deduction, that's a great deduction available to you. And then you could also set that up with a profit sharing plan. Then allows you an additional contribution up to 20% of your business profit, taking you all the way up to an additional $43,500. So a tremendous amount of money that you can put into your 401k 401k profit sharing plan if you set it up right. So if you're someone who's getting a late start on saving for retirement, or you had a really good year in business as a solopreneur, think about setting up a self-employed 401k. It's relatively easy. You can set up with Charles Schwab, Fidelity, a number of companies. It gets more complicated when you have employees, and you'll need a little more help to do that. But it's a great way to give you a tax deduction um, if, you know, for your income and for your business. Tip number five consider purchasing a vehicle. You might be able to buy a vehicle for your business and write off a certain percentage of that vehicle's acquisition costs in this year. This is known as Section 179 depreciation. This also applies to equipment, other business purchases, but I'm just going to focus on the vehicle um, part of it. And if that vehicle is used exclusively for business, you might be able to write off the full amount and if you use it for personal and business use, you may be all, all able to write off a percentage. Let's say it's for 70% business use, then you might be able to write off up to 70%. And this is especially beneficial if you buy an SUV or a truck 
that weighs more than 6,000 pounds, but less than 14,000 pounds, because then you can accelerate that depreciation. This was a big deal last year. Unfortunately, it's not as good, but you possibly can still write off up to $28,900 of that vehicle's cost in this year. So that is something to think about if you're gonna purchase a vehicle, you might be able to do it this year and help your business costs to take an additional deduction. Tip number six, it's consider contributing to a traditional IRA. This um, doesn't have to be done by year end, but if you're um, self-employed or you work for a business and your adjusted gross income is under the limits, you could contribute to a traditional IRA and also take a tax deduction on it in addition to your 401k. So check more into that as far as what the taxable income limits. Generally for a married couple filing jointly, your adjusted gross income has to be 100, under 116,000 and for a single individual under 73,000 if you're covered by a retirement plan at work. And the last tip is to consider fully funding your health savings account or HSA. And you're able to put in an amount based on your family status. If you're a single individual, it's $38,500. And then if you're married or have a dependent, it's up to $7,750 for 2023. And that's including any contribution that your employer makes. So make sure that you're maxing out that plan. And then if you're over 55, you can put an additional $1,000 catch up in. So most of the time people do this through payroll deduction. And that's one way to do it, but you also can open up an HSA on your own if you find that at the end of the year you haven't met the maximum and you want to put the maximum in for tax deduction, you can set up a separate HSA with Fidelity or a number of other companies and you can then contribute the money into that account and give yourself a pre-tax deduction. I also have a number of episodes on HSAs that you might want to go back and check out to learn more about this. So those are seven tax tips that can help you for with some tax reduction strategies for this year and beyond. And as always, if you have a listener question, feel free to go to retirewithryan.com to leave your listener question. I enjoyed talking with you this week. Look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Take care.